Sup everyone, this is Bren, and welcome back to another gameplay guide video. This time we're going to be taking a look at Gyrocopter played in the safe lane, and for anyone that's new, in these videos I try to do my best to both demonstrate and discuss the ins and outs of playing a hero to take advantage of the skill sets. So Gyro is a ranged agility carry that's really popular right now in tournament play, including the International 5. He's picked primarily because he can solo really easily in the safe lane and zone offlaners off the wave by himself, which means that he can free up space for your supports to do things such as roaming or just helping out in the offlane. So essentially he's able to just snowball your team in the early game and he goes like him real well because of flat cannon and a good agility game per level. He's also against solo queue pubs for the same reason since some pubs will have to rely on yourself a lot. So he's just a really good carry and this applies to all my ratings, not just mine. And just to check, I am currently 6.4. I believe the the uh, average in each team is 5.8 KMR. He also counters Undying, so if you've seen Undying in your games, this hero is going to be really good no matter what, since he lands really well against them, and he counters his Tombstone in mid-game fights with Flat Cannon. So we're going for the rune here. Now, the, the common thing to see when you play Gyro is, if your opponents are smart, they'll kind of just let you have the rune, just because with Rocket Barrage, which does a lot of damage at level 1, even after the nerfs, You'll, you'll oftentimes just get free kills, so um, essentially they just let you have it. They won't even contest. Um, so for the bounty rune there, I give it to I let Wisp, Wisp have it because him rushing a bottle means he'll be able to just aid people around the map. But so on to my starting build though. I like going for my Wraith Band and my Tango if I know that I'm going to be mostly 1v1, just because I really like to get that initial that initial damage increase. Um, the other build that you could go for is going for a uh, a circlet, um, and then going for some tangos, and then rushing out your uh, your bassy. It's also really good, and that's really good. It's going to be much better if you are say in a a more, a more traditional dual lane. But since I'm with with Wisp, I know that he's going to be doing a lot of pulls, so I know that I'm just going to be one v one. So this build is just really good. Um, so I skilled flight cannon. I'm just I'm just using it to get the creep wave down because I know that Wisp is going to be pulling, so I'm pushing the wave, and I'm trying to do my best to last it and both harass him with flat cannon, which does the auto attacks in a in a uh, AOE. Um, so yeah, whenever you whenever you have your supports pulling, uh, go ahead and just push the lane out, get creep lane advantage, and play up on the the enemy. Otherwise, if you don't push the lane out, you're going to have to do a lot of last hitting on a tower, which means you're going to have to burn your regen. Their offlaner will sometimes be able to just go mess with your support that's pulling, and stuff like just stuff like that. It gets mess. It gets messy. So whenever you see your support pulling, just go ahead and push the lane a bit. So I'm lasting in her tower with 54 damage. I should have last hit it once, and then let the uh, the tower hit the, the melee creeps five times. Um, so it should be two hits here. I don't get that. That's all right. It's really hard to to get these lasses in her tower with with low base damage and with creeps on top. Now, I, I see that he pulled to the the side, which is which is pretty nice for me because with Gyro you can actually just take out these take out these creeps really easily, both to use the flat cannon and rocket barrage. So I activate flat. I'm gonna be auto attacking down, uh, and I'm using my rocket barrage to also uh, clear the camp, which is gonna give me a, a huge boost in the lane. I already have 13 CS, which is which is okay, but I also have just got that big creep, so I got a lot of EXP off that. Currently level four. I'm gonna be denying this back. Now I'm gonna, like, essentially with with Gyro in the off, with, in, in in the safe lane solo. Once you get your boots, that's when you really start to just dominate the lane because you can, uh, like, just the threat of just the threat of running up and using rocket barrage is just so high, and just does so much damage in the early stages. No, he's kind of just playing back. There's not really too much he can do in this lane other than a click on me to, to draw aggro and then use his shockwave to get some last hits. I activate my flak because I know that, that I'm going to have his wave pushing in. I want to harass him and get... I actually do miss some CS there, but that's fine. But I don't want it to... I don't want like to have two waves underneath my tower. It just gets messy, as I talked about before. So you always want to try and be doing your best to just hold lane equilibrium. So you have to consider 
uh, like with the the enemy's waves, maybe like your support pulling as I also mentioned. Now, for my build, I'm just going to be rushing phase boots. Treads is really popular right now, just because of the most recent buff to Rocket Barrage, where it doesn't have a cast point anymore. So you can you can go for like a more tanky gyrocopter and just use Rocket Barrage to your advantage. You just get in their face with the, the extra strength that Treads give you. But I'm going for phase boots, just because I, with phase boots I can really just dominate the 1v1. I can do jungle rotations really easily, and it makes my flak a lot stronger. Um, because flak is, flak is, flak cannon is a limited uh, amount of attacks. It's 3, 4, 5, 6 at levels 1, 2, 3, and 4. So obviously it's, it's a limited amount of AoE damage you can do, based on your, your actual damage amount. So phase boots is better for that. Although with treads, you, you have the additional attack speed, so you are releasing more attacks per second. It's kind of weird, but uh, phase will get give the uh, the most damage if you, if you get off all of the attacks. Anyways, so I'm pushing in the lane a little bit here. Um, I'm going to have that way pushing into a tower, and I'm going to have the swift coming up, so you have to be taking advantage of this timing and go ahead and pull it to your... To the side. Hopefully I can get all the denies. I'm going to be playing up a little bit right here just to scare him off like going over there and farming it. But he's going over there anyways. Uh, I take a look and I'm like alright he's he can maybe farm my creeps but he's not going to be able to get the big creeps. And even if he uses shockwave he's actually going to be helping me when I go to clear that stack because the creeps will be a little bit lower. So I finish taking off that wave. Now I'm going to be heading over to the hard camp. At this point, it's like, okay, let's just farm these. I have my ultimate. Call down. Just AoE damage. And I pop my flat cannon. I'm using my barrage. He gets some, he gets like one creep there, but still, he can't deny his own creeps, which I got all, almost all of. I'm getting that large uh, creep as well. So I'm almost at 50 CS at, uh, at 550, which is really good for safe laner. You really want to be taking advantage of Gyro's just ability to, to do those type of things. Radiance middle tower is under attack. I'm gonna continuously pressure the lane in. Auto attacking that creep down. I'm gonna stop here a little bit to take that creep. And once I once I do this, I'm gonna be doing some more rotations. Now at this point I'm kind of like Radiance considering my op my items op attack. my item options. I like to go for either drums, if I know that I want to be battling more, with an Aquila. Or I go for a helmet of dominator get a range creep and start stacking ancients for the late game. But this game, I see that they have more of an early game lineup, especially with heroes such as like AA, so I really need that extra boost of HP which drums will give me. So I decided to go for a drums build here over going for a, an early Helm of the Dominator. So as you can see, I am both farming the lane and the hard camp, or doing my best to do so. I'm constantly using my abilities. Like you can see I'm low on mana. Uh, I think that's one of the, the bigger issues that people don't, people at lower levels uh, run into. They just don't use their mana to farm, to get to get ahead, to get ahead in terms of farming. Don't be afraid of to to, to use your skills. Um, obviously, there are some situations where you do want to be saving your mana uh, if you know that you're. If there's going to be like a battle breaking out pretty soon, but my goal this game is just to get ahead in the early game. Just so when the fights do start breaking out. I'm able to just go in and dominate them. Popping my flak again, just to push the lane out. Going back to the hard camp, putting the uh, putting my bassy on the courier, putting drums on my quick buy. I'm going to be stacking this, so you want to be doing your best to to stack as well at every minute. Attacked it at uh, 53. And then I, and then I uh, turn on my flak, taking out the easy camps, doing some damage to the hard camps as well. Just softening them up for when I come back. So Kira's being a little bit weird. Anyways, I have my phase, I have my bracer, my quilla. I also got a full, uh, an upgraded wand. So I'm kind of battle ready at this point. Once I get my drums, it's going to be on. It's going to be a really easy to fight. So we have... Magnus just uses RP. You're going to be getting the Tusk, but RP for Tusk, it's alright. 
Maybe they'll maybe they'll get the lash as well. Doesn't look like it. Oh no, he, he dies as well too. Wind Ranger power shot. Okay. Radiance middle tower. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Now I'm looking around the map. There's not really much I can do in terms of like TPing around to help my team. Like nobody's being dove, so I'm just gonna TP back top, continue my farming. I'm at 71 CS, which is pretty much optimal. You want to have around 80 CS by 10 minutes. In these sort of, I wouldn't say an easy lane, I was kind of 1v1 versus a Magnus. It, I guess it is pretty easy with the gyrocopter as I said, it's just a lane dominator. Uh, that's why I kind of recommend them for pubs. And the care position currently is really good. Taking out this hard camp. It's popping my abilities, I do not care if I take some damage or lose, m or if I get a little bit low on mana. Middle now I see that all of them are missing. Ideally, I would go back to the to the lane, and I want to be farming the lane keeps over the small camp. But I don't know exactly where they all are, so I'm playing it safe, just staying in this, just taking out the small camp. But now it's being pushed underneath my tower, so I can go take this wave. Um, so Magnus, he 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 actually could have just sat there and just uh, denied it back back to his tower, but he decided to use shockwave to push it in. Which I guess is okay as well, because he also doesn't know where my teammates are. It's kind of like a map awareness thing. Um, always be looking at the minimap. I cannot stress that enough. I have my drum recipe on the courier, so I'm just waiting for that. Up in my barrage. This camp down. So they're kind of missing again. Just going back to the easy camp. I figure that Magnus is going to be pushing it again, as he is. So I'm taking, so I'm kind of like keeping track of the the Magnus's patterns in terms of the lane. But he's playing it safe. He actually went mid. I see there's a battle breaking out. I want to join. I have my my wand and my drums, as I said. I want to be coming to this fight. It looks like I can get a really good ult right here. Oh, this will be perfect. I put on my ulti, pop my flak, go in, attack. Got a triple kill. Pretty much just cleaned up. Didn't really do too much. Just press a few buttons. But still, just watching the map. I I have I I go for one point in my uh, in my homing missile for cases like this. I do not think that maxing homing missile is very good. Um, just having max level flak and barrage beforehand is just much better. You can max homing missile if you want, I guess. But I would not. I would not prioritize it over Barrage or Flak if you're in the, the one position. Maybe for mid or maybe for a support you can go ahead and do that, but not as a carry. I do not recommend it. I'm incredibly low now though. I'm going for my Helm Dominator next. So essentially what I did this game is I went for the, the more bulky, more fighting, battle oriented build up in the early game with the drums. I'm going to be transitioning more into the farming role now that I kind of have the dominance in terms of the fights. We just we just won that fight, so we get that extra map control. Um, once you get your Humble Dominator as well, you can start stacking Ancients, and you can take them out really, really, really fast and effectively with Flat Cannon to really boost your GPM. So I heard an AA Blast. I'm looking around. Where was that? Uh, it was on the Wisp. I see he's blasted. Pops a regen rune with the tether on, so that means I'll be able to heal up. I won't have to go back. I'm like, alright, so maybe we can re relocate somewhere. Just looking around the map, they're all missing. Still just waiting around. Maybe we can get a bait on the tusk. Alright, so we see Death Prophet just gunning it down here. Kind of strangely. I don't know why he's just running on the river. We're going to be getting a snowball in. This looks like a pretty easy kill. I'm dropping my ulti. Some people might save it, but I don't care. I want to pop him as soon as possible. Even if there was, to say, like a fight break out there, we can just completely get rid of the DP so he can't use any silence. He can't use any damage from his ulti before he dies. Um, it's really useful. So, Especially since he's their one position hero. DP farming is safer. Bottom tower is under attack. So I'm shackled here. 
But I do have my Wisp, so he's overcharging me, so I'm taking less damage, and I'm healing from him as well. Additional heal. Now, I'm looking at this fight, I'm like, alright, can I help him out? He's kind of Magnus is getting low, but I didn't realize that Wind Ranger had a, had a Shadow Blade there, so. He catches me off guard. It's not a big deal. This type of things happen. Um, usually the first Shadow Blade usage by the enemy team, you're gonna kind of have those silly deaths right there. Um, yeah. But, even though I did just die, me and Tess died, we still got the DP in the end, and we created enough space for, for uh, Leshrac to get mid, and for Necro to get top. So essentially, those deaths were kind of, I guess, space created. It was actually more worth it for us to die there. Uh, just because we get those two towers. We get the gold, we get the extra map control. The enemy team loses the vision. But I do TP back bot, I want to continue my farming. I've kind of been stopping my farming just to create, just because I wanted, I wanted to give some space to both Necrolite and the Shrek. I see the time is 14.50. I want to go and stack the Ancients. Hopefully I can get the stack off. It is a little bit late, but I, I should be able to get it off. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Alright, here we go. I did get the stack off. I see that they just went on my left track, killed him. So I'm around the I'm around the area in case a fight breaks out. I'm really just battle ready at this point. I have my dominator, I have my drums, my wand, Aquila. It's just time to fight. Alright. So Wind Ranger does have a Shadow Blade. It should be down though, but we did just dust her, so we will hopefully be able to get this kill. I'm using my Rocket Barrage. I'm going to be maybe zoning in, so using a zoning ult. Some people might again say like, okay, why did you just ulti there? Well, it's just in case there was a fight to break out. Um, it just makes, it just kind of pushes them away from actually going in and engaging and helping him. Uh, so we get the cleaner, cl the cleaner kill and we're able to just disengage really easy. So pulling it again, always stay on top of your pulling. Um, I should have dominated a creep by now, but I haven't really had a chance this ever. I haven't really had a chance ever since I got my dominator. And I would say the best creep to dominate is definitely just the the lane the lane range creep. Uh, it doesn't cost much gold in terms of dominating dominating it, because if you dominate like a a troll summoner. In the, for a neutral camp, you're actually losing a lot of gold by doing that. But if you just take a land creep, it's not a big deal. In terms of the gold, uh, the relative loss you're getting. Popping my flak, just to clear these down as quick as possible. I have my wisp near me, near me so if a, if a fight was to break out, we can TP in. Just trying to be as efficient in terms of my farming as possible. It's 16 minutes, I have 124 CS. It's pretty good in terms of what's been happening this game. If it was a more passive game, I'd probably have a decent more, a decent amount more. I might even have my Dominator and have taken out some Ancients by now. Popping my Rocket Barrage. There's no point in saving my mana completely. I have 558. I dominate the creep finally, so I've, I'm going to be doing my best to try and stack it whenever possible. Always make sure that whenever you do stack a creep like that, to put it into a hotkey. Control group, I mean. So yeah, hotkey. Have the control group hotkeyed, I mean. <laughs> Taking a look at mid, I am tethered right now, maybe we can get a relocate in. I'm going right on top. I'm throwing out my call down right away. I didn't, I'm silent, so I cannot pop my flak right now, unfortunately. But still, we're getting a good, pretty good kill here. In the back, there's also the Wind Ranger, which we managed to catch out. So, pretty good. Stacking the camp. Even though that fight broke out, I'm still trying to remain calm, focused, and uh, just kind of looking at the clock no matter what. I'm probably going to be making a video on, on like map awareness and uh, like watching the time and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. Um, yeah. DP is push pressuring bot, but we are mid still. I'm like, alright, maybe we can get some damage in here. Wind Ranger is still dead, Magnus is dead, and even if Magnus comes back, they do not have RP, they don't have Disruptor Ultimate. Pop my flag, always pop your flag and hit the nearest target. It's not so much at this point 
rocketing them with the rocket barrage. It's more so popping the flag and then hitting the target, hitting a target, and just getting them all low. Um, rather than just focusing on using my flag. I mean my barrage. So I see the timer again. I actually missed this stack. So I'm kind of looking back just to make sure none of them are chasing me. I see I'm pretty much in the in the clear, so I take out that camp, heading over here. I'm gonna help my Necro. I'm just gonna pop my barrage and run through. I'm gonna let him get, take the farm. Necrofo scales really well. Uh, it's gonna be really important that we have more than like just me being like the core in this game. 16 to 14. Uh, we've been taking pretty much our advantages. We haven't been losing them. Pretty good game. So fight breaking out. I'm gonna try and do my best to land with a good ultimate here. I lay it down right in the direction that they're about that they're heading towards, or their, their escape direction. I'm not I'm not putting my LT directly on top of them, but I'm getting a blasted. I pop my drums to run away as fast as I can. I'm just trying to avoid, avoid the shockwave, so I'm running around a little bit in circles. But they end, they end up getting me anyways. So that was kind of an advantage throw right there. Pretty small throw. Now, for my next item, after my Dominator and my Ring of Aquila, I like to go into SNY currently. It's kind of a, it's kind of the competitive build currently, uh, right now. Just because it gives you a little bit of everything. It gives you some damage, some armor, movement speed, and, all, and also you get the, the maim, or the slow chance to proc whenever you hit someone. So it's really useful. It helps you stay on top of them with your, with your Rocket Barrage. Helps you get in range for targets to use your flat cannon, get your attacks off, because Gyro's range is kind of bad. Um, if you were to see like an S and Y like one month ago on a Gyro, you'd probably get like you'd probably get flamed if you were to do that in a pub game. But all of a sudden, people just realize, all right, it's a pretty good build. Uh, I think maybe it's because of Rocket Barrage as well, just because it's a lot better with no cast point, as I said. But I, I don't know. By the time you have S and Y, anyways. Rocket Barrage isn't gonna be doing that much any that much anymore, but it's just a good item on him. My next item I really want to be going for is going for a butterfly. Um, if you if you manage to get butterfly and S and Y with your Dominator, and then you get an Aegis, you can you can easily go for a base push at that point. Use Flak to zone him off. Use your ultimate to zone him off. Get some tower damage in. I'm still. Maintaining my efficiency, my efficiency in terms of my farm. Dyer's top tower is under Stacking ancients, although I'm being semi lazy. I missed a few stacks, but I have gotten a lot as well. Tethering up, maybe we can relocate onto them. We should be defending this tower though. All right, so we see some more on the mini map. I want to be throwing out my ulti just, just in the in the area. I don't care if it just hits the disruptor. It's not a big deal. I didn't pack, pop my flak yet because it was the only target I was hitting. But now I pop my flak because there are more targets in range. I'm playing a little bit far back because I'm a ulted. I don't want to be caught into the the DP's damage uh, right now. So just cutting back a bit. Make sure they can't catch me. DP is too fast though. Playing it back, farming that wave. We don't have our own creep, so there's back row protection on that tier 2 tower. Can't go uh, to get any damage in there right now. Taking those easy camp. I see that Windrunner just uses her ultimate. I don't want to get shackle shot, or, um, yeah, shackled. Because he might be able to kill me with his ultimate. So I, that's why I was kind of squirming around there. Uh, making it hard for him to line it up. <clears throat> line it up. Getting off my stack. Taking out this hard camp, then I'll be heading over there to take out the ancient stack. There's really no point in just heading over there right away. And even for this hard camp, I'm still stacking it. Always go for the stacks. Watch the clock. Top tower has it should be basically ingrained into your brain if you're playing a carry. My ping to my wisp, like, alright. And I kind of make a mistake here. I should be popping my flak beforehand because it does last for a while, the buff. But I popped it right as I hit the ancients, meaning I won't have two flaks for the, for actually taking out this ancient stack. You know what I mean? If you pop it earlier, by the time you get there, it's running out, but your cooldown is coming back up, so you can get out the five attacks, and then you can pop flak again and then reuse it. So essentially you're getting um, 
12, 12 AoE attacks. But I use it a bit late there. Got the deny in though on the tower. Nothing too big. I caught my ultimate. We don't have dust though. We're both AA blasted. We're calling the disruptor ult. Hopefully he doesn't bring me back. He brings me back, but I'm looking in my direction. I'm mules again, but I see okay, they just use all their abilities. I can go back in. I have flag popped. I'm gonna use my rocket barrage again. Going in on them. Hopefully I can get this kill, but just kinda messed it up by using his cute, but that's alright. I just kinda bugged bugged the A out there. I don't know why how it moved him up so far. It's kinda strange. Sitting at 3.6k gold currently. Butterfly is really good on this here just because of the way Flak works. Um, since it's cooldown based and it's and it's a, uh, a static amount of 6 attacks at level 4. So you just want to have that raw damage. So Butterfly gives you 60 damage. MKB gives you a little bit more damage, but you don't get the bonus of like the armor or the evasion. You also don't attack as fast, so you'll have more damage. It's kind of like the comparison between treads and phase. Like MKB is better overall if you're able to get max flax in, but butterfly means that you'll be able to get the flax out a lot faster and it'll be more survivable. So I like going for the butterfly. It's pretty much a standard as well. It synergizes with the with Aegis from Roshan. Just because you're gonna have your extra life, it's gonna be really hard for them to bring you down twice with your evasion and your lifesteal. And so as you just saw, we just spread the racks for way too long, being too greedy, kind of just throwing the game away, because this game can still go into either way, uh, with heroes such as Magnus, AA, those big ultimates where you can actually just get by men wiped. Really, depend, re really, even regardless of how much farm you, you have. If he, hit, if he hits a 5-man RP with an AA blast for the top and disruptor ult, they can easily win the game still. And Windrunner is quite farmed. Do manage to take out the Wind Ranger though. It's really important, but we are all dead. So I'm respawning. I've been sacking the infants a bit. I'm gonna pour in, take it out. And once again, I do not flack early. So mistake by me. But anyways, I do have enough damage any at this point that I don't need to flax to clear it. I, so we're getting poured in. I don't have flat cannon, but I want to be putting on my ulti. I get silenced though. It's kind of situations like that where I wish I went for the Manta build instead of the SMI. Manta Bend would have been actually really good this game. Because of the silences. I think you might be able to disjoint glimpse if you time it correctly as well. It would have been a good item in this game. But SMI is still very good. I'm gonna pop I'm gonna lay down my ulti, pop my flak, maybe we can get some some stuff going on. I have my my eagle song. I'm doing a lot of damage at this point. Just eight clicking. I don't care about the barrage at this point. I just wanna be attacking them in range to get my flags out. Get a four man kill there with the help of Wisp, overcharge. So really good stuff coming out. Okay, so this is why I have Tusk muted. Just flaming the entire game. Both our team and the enemies. I don't understand what was happening. So we're taking out this Rax. I'm still gonna be going I'm still gonna or some still aiming for my butterfly, which I do have enough gold to complete at this point. I can't really stack because his illusions are right there, but I'm gonna attempt it anyways. He actually pulls his illusions back for me, so I managed to get a stack off. How oh, nice of him. So when Andrew gets ulted, we have a huge advantage at this point. But as I said, it's still pretty easy to lose. Finish my butterfly. At this point, I want to be Heading over to Roche, take, taking out Roche, getting the Aegis on me, just so I can kind of clear my clear the area for my for the next high ground push for my team with using my ultimate and flat cannon. Popping on my ultimate to zone. I hit two of them, getting out of the static field to pop my flak, just hitting whatever target I can because it will hit everyone in the range. And at this point, I'm, there's just too much damage on the field for me. Almost doing 300 per. Uh, flat. Bullshit cannon. It's is that spell's name. 
That's what DP says. It is really strong. This hero is quite strong. If you want to raise your Omar. Uh, in the and you get, you know, if you get if you get into a pub and you want to put carry and raise your Omar, I'd say this hero is really strong right now. I wouldn't say he's broken. He's, I would say, he's slightly overpowered. Though. Just slightly. He's just really good at snowballing and maintaining that advantage. So maybe we're going to get it going to end here. Yeah, at this point the game is pretty much over. Swing for the racks to fall. Ushrak buys back. TP's in. And he should be just be ending the game right here. Alright guys, so...